This is a tutorial on bottle feeding kittens. We're going to start out with a good kitten milk replacer. It comes in either powdered cans or ready mixed. You can use either one. I'm going to show you how to do the powder. Uh, the first step is to know that the ratio is one portion of powder to two portions of warm water. I find that one of these diet um, cups with the mixing ball in it is really good to use because the powder doesn't mix very well with just uh, a fork or with a spoon. And so I find that if you mix it up this way, it mixes really well. And I mean, who uses these diet bottles anyway, right? Uh, make sure the water is warm, just like with a human baby. You can test it on the inside of your wrist to make sure it's not too hot. Um, I use a small bottle like this with a small nipple. You can get them at Walmart. Um, now, it'll tell you to pinprick or cut it with a knife. I typically take scissors and just cut the very tip off so that you can see the hole, um, but that the, needle, or the, the nipple is still long enough. And then I put it on the bottle. This bottle is already full. I usually give it a little bit of a shake just before I feed. Um, and now we need a kitten. I usually uh, try to use a fleece or a towel to feed them on, uh, both for cleanliness and also to give them something to hold on to. The most important thing about bottle feeding a kitten is that you should do it four on the floor. Their, their paws should be on the floor or just slightly elevated. The most important thing to watch out for is that they do not swallow the fluid into their lungs. Aspirating it could cause pneumonia and eventual death. Um, it's, it's really a difficult thing to treat in a young, young kitten, so we're gonna really be careful to feed them flat on the floor. Um, and just imagine their mother lying here and they would be coming at mama like this. It's awkward for us because we typically want to hold them on their backs and feed them like a human baby. No, that's not how we're gonna do it. So, what we need now is a kitten. Please meet Abilene. This is Abilene. Hopefully she's hungry enough to give a good demonstration. And you just... Um, you'll see sometimes they'll gum it like that on the side. Um, that's perfectly okay. They're, uh, again, thinking that it's their mama and they're going to try and stimulate her. But when they latch on, you'll know because their little ears start going. So we're just going to give this some time. And again, um, this kitten is about three to four weeks of age and she is going to eat at least uh, two ounces at a sitting. Uh, a newborn is going to eat about um, five cc's at one sitting. That's about a teaspoon. And uh, if they're really, really young, you may want to put this nipple on the end of a plastic syringe or eyedropper to make it easier. There, she's latched on. Can you see her little ears going? And she's going to do all the hard work for me. Um, now, when they're nursing on their mamas, this is a very snuggly time, so I always try to keep my hand on them, keep them warm. And as she's feeding, I'm just going to say a few more things about newborns. Uh, the two highest causes of death in a newborn or a very young bottle feeding kitten is hypothermia and dehydration. So you need to keep them warm. We often use a warming stone here or um, a hot water bottle wrapped in a towel or even a rice sock. If you've got one of your old miss mates in the laundry room, fill it up with some rice or barley and put it in the microwave, maybe a minute or two, make sure it's not too hot, wrap it in a nice towel or a fleece and put it in their box with them. And that'll keep them nice and roasty toasty. So this is how we bottle feed. Now she has already consumed an ounce. Let me just try one other to show you. This is her sister, Campbell. Campbell's a good eater. Now, different people have different techniques and I, I like to hold their paws because they would normally push on their mama Oh yeah, she's going to town.
Now, until they are using the litter box on their own, which usually coincides with when they're weaning and eating solid food, you have to stimulate them to urinate and defecate. In common language, that's known as peeing and pooping. And I don't want to interrupt her feeding quite yet, but in the interest of time in this video, we'll move on while she's still sucking over to here. And so after they're done eating, you're going to have to stimulate their genitalia. And I like to either use a cotton ball or one of these little cotton makeup removers. This is 100% cotton and some warm water that I have here. And I will demonstrate this and it's another good reason to have the towel or some paper towels because they are going to pee. All right, Campbell, let's show them how it's done. Now, this particular group are reluctant poopers, so I don't know if she will give me a sample, but warm water, squeeze it out, and they are, they're gonna scream, they always do. This looks much worse than, it's way more traumatic for me. So right here in between the poop chute and the pier, you just rub and it, a, a motion as if mother was licking because this is what mother would do and just keep going and okay the pee is coming out you can see that so she's peeing now she oops oh, and she's got some poop coming out too now she's got a little bit of diarrhea because we just switched over to um to kmr from goat's milk and so she's got a little bit of diarrhea and we just wipe it up but if you don't stimulate them, it's going to stay in. They cannot get it out by themselves without stimulation, and it can cause a blockage and uh, eventual death, megacolon or death. So this has to be done. I know, baby, I know. They hate it, they really do, but not quite as much as I do. Um, now, if this was not diarrhea, and I'll see how some of the other ones do, they may not have been as affected by the goat's milk. Um, but if it's not diarrhea, it will come out in a solid mass as a turd, and you're just gonna stimulate that little poop chute until it starts coming out. It will usually come out by itself, but you may have to help it out by continued stimulation. Good girl, oops. Got some more. Yeah, you can just make sure they're done. Oh, there, see, that's coming out more solid. I hope nobody's having breakfast while you're watching this, but uh, you know, poop is a big thing in rescue. We, uh, we assess the health of an animal on how it poops. The condition, the color, the texture, the smell. And I would say this little girl is having a little bit of an adjustment to her new food. Totally expected. Um, she may also have some intestinal parasites. We start worming at two weeks of age with pyrantal, and we do it every two weeks. Um, when they're old enough to have a stool sample, um, she certainly is, we would take her in. Okay, I think she's done. She's letting me know she's done. Oh, say hello, Campbell. Say hello. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, you may uh, private message me and I'll do my best. Again, everyone has their own way of doing it. This is a way that I have found is successful for me and I hope you give it a try. There is no magic to it and we're here to support you. Thank you.